Hi, I'm Frida. And I'm Amitai. Welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript investigates new deportation actions in Western Massachusetts. Goes for a run with the Northampton High Cross Country team. And explores a possible new course option for musically inclined students. The Syrian regime imposed siege on the eastern Gota region of rural Damascus has tightened over the last few months. Eastern Gota was supposed to be one of the de-escalation zones which was brokered a year ago by Russia, Turkey, and Iran. This has failed, and civil defense workers have estimated that about 955 missiles have dropped since July, resulting in about 126 deaths. Aid to the area has been inadequate, with only 5% of need being met. The area is currently controlled by the rebels, who have signed a ceasefire with the government, but it is unclear how effective this will be. On Thursday, Donald Trump declared the opioid crisis a public health emergency. He announced a plan to target the use of opioids, which kill 140 Americans a day. Previously, Trump promised to declare it a national emergency, which will have triggered federal funding. Instead, the plan will redirect grant money towards addressing the issue. Specifically, it will be funded through the Public Health Emergency Fund, which is reported to contain only $57,000. Cuban officials have denied any responsibility in the ailments of U.S. diplomats stationed in Cuba. Over the past year, diplomats have reported symptoms such as hearing loss, memory loss, nausea, and mild traumatic brain injury. The U.S. government believes these symptoms are a result of a sonic weapon. Three weeks ago, the U.S. pulled 60% of its workers from Havana and expelled two-thirds of the Cuban delegation from the U.S. Hi, I'm Flor Castillo, and this is Still It Like It Is. On January 25th, at the Department of Homeland Security, Trump signed executive orders on border security and interior enforcement. In comparison to the Obama administration, which deported the greatest number of undocumented immigrants in U.S. history, the Trump administration has not been able to exceed the total number of deported immigrants, but the tactics that it uses to deport immigrants have slightly changed, um, and there is an overall increase in atmosphere of fear. Deportations of thousands of immigrants are supposed to increase in future months. Immigration and Customs Enforcement have tripled the number of officers available for immigration enforcement, making it easier to deport immigrants without due process, and threatening to take away critical federal funding from jurisdictions that have sought to build trust with immigrant residents. So the impacts of deportation are numerous. There's the psychological, social, and economic impact that it has on the individual, but also on society. On the individual level, it creates an atmosphere of psychological terror that people are too afraid to do everyday things. On, the, on a larger level, it creates an atmosphere where immigrants who are the most among the most exploited workers are too afraid to speak up and to demand their rights. So t uh, Immigration Customs Enforcement uses several tactics to be able to detain and deport people. They mainly rely on fear, ignorance, um, and just trickery. So one example is that they will ask all sorts of questions to people. Where were you born? Are you uh, undocumented? When did you come to this country? And scaring people into giving over that information. Deportations can be prevented on multiple levels. If we talk about the individual level, immigrants should become aware and empowered about their rights. Uh, what, when, how much information do I give? If a police officer stops me, what information do I share, do I not share? Immigrants should also work with an organization such as the Pioneer Valley Workers Center because in the case that they are detained, they have the support of an organization that has lawyers and that can mobilize the whole community to put pressure on ICE to release you. Under President Obama's Dream Act legislation, cases where the person has no criminal record will have been put on hold as long as he checked annually with immigration services. However, under Trump's legislation, Every undocumented person living in the United States is subject to arrest and deportation, regardless of their actions while residing in the U.S. I'm Flor Castillo, and this was Tell It Like It Is.
Hi, I'm Gabe Nicotera. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? Cross country, often referred to as the land equivalent to swimming, has the best record at Northampton High School so far this season. The Urban Dictionary defines the term sister as a female with whom you share parents with. Emma and Mary Yount may be responsible for part of this year's success for the girls' cross-country team. This week, I sat down with them regarding something more than just a sport, a sisterhood. So I think the question everybody has literally been dying to ask you is, do you two race down to the dinner table after being called? Well, not usually, but if we were to be racing, Mary would probably win because I'm not a sprinter at all. All right, so Mary, this year's team is gonna lose five seniors uh, for next year. So where do you see the team going? Um, well, we have a really strong freshman class, and overall, yeah, our team is doing pretty well. Me and Rosie and just the varsity squad is really strong, and I think our season will go pretty good, and I hope mine will too. I decided that since I'm in perfect athletic condition, a 5K would be a run in the park. So I went on one with running sorcerer Jonathan Dean. So, a lot of people don't really know exactly how a typical meet day goes for cross country, so can you take me through a typical meet day? Yeah, sure. Well, there's a lot, a lot of preparation that goes into a regular 5K, but it usually entails you know, getting up early, having a nice hearty breakfast, staying hydrated, just getting in that, in that you know, good mindset. So your class, the class of 2018, is actually pretty stacked, so how do you think your grade has made an impact on the cross country program? Well, I know that when I was a freshman, the senior class was also like extremely stacked and really talented. And so, like as a freshman, seeing seeing, seeing the senior class be so um, like excellent at what they do is definitely like very inspirational, and it motivated me to want to be like them. First things first. Happy birthday to Lonzo Ball. He is 19 today. Also, the girls' soccer team has a home game this afternoon at 4 p.m. The boys' soccer team has their senior night tonight, starting at 6 p.m. Let's pray for a win. On Sunday, the cross country teams have Western Mass Championships at one o'clock. Run your hearts out. Finally, the girls soccer team has their senior night Monday at 6 p.m. Good luck to everyone. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. I'm Gabe Nicotera. Hi, I'm Odette Bennis and welcome back to Hit It or Miss It, where all things pop culture and style are covered. For many students in NHS, music isn't just something you listen to when you're studying or when you're bored. It's a future career. NHS is home to many aspiring and upcoming producers and artists. Unfortunately, many cannot afford thousands of dollars worth of equipment to be able to do the one thing they love most. Stephen Eldred, theater teacher and head of theater in NHS, has created a project with the help of SOCA to fix that problem. Beats is a new upcoming after-school program that gives NHS students the resources to create and produce their own music. I had the pleasure to sit down with Stephen and talk more about Beats. So my idea is based on a couple of experiences I've had where students have, um, I've had students come in either during like my one-act festival or classes and want to work on a song. Uh, I have a, a computer lab in my back room behind the Black Box Theater where we have all kinds of editing software available so students who are interested in composing could compose, yeah? And then the Black Box Theater is this great space because it's got a 5-1 surround sound system, it's got a subwoofer, um, it's very easy to set up for doing a sound performance. The idea would be that it could be like a club um, and that the they could get together every week and use the black box theater one afternoon a week to compose things and practice performing and then it could turn into a show. I sat down with Deb Kuhn, band teacher at NHS, to discuss how beats can fit in with other NHS programs. What I think about this project is that it's a great project. I think it's important for kids to have access to some of these things so that they can have a chance at pursuing the careers that they want to. 
I think that a lot of schools are offering more courses in this as time goes on. I will be retiring and they'll be hiring a new music teacher and my hope is actually that that new person is younger, has more uh, familiarity with technology and can actually fold what is going to be a club into a new class, which I think there would be a lot of interest in. But what do aspiring artists in NHS think of beats? I've been, um, I've been writing music for about six years, but I just currently started recording uh, on and off for about a year. I think beats would probably help kids uh, in the school who don't have equipment um, help them get their ideas out on some sort of platform to get it out there to the public. Soka plays a role in this by having it basically branch off of Soka as like another um, club and organization and they're helping it by not having white people take, take it over and making it more of like another safe place for people with a more musical creativity type of mindset. So what do you think? Are you an aspiring artist who wishes to use beats? If you are, come talk to Steve Eldridge in the black box. I'm Odette Bennis and this was Hit It or Miss It. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to head over to NHSTechnology.org to watch this week's online extras. Germany is definitely winning the World Cup, but it'd be pretty sick if Iceland won. So people think that these doors are locked to keep the seniors inside and not going out. But really they're locked to keep something 